I'll show you the three most important Liebscher and Bracht exercises that will ensure most of the causes of your sciatica pain are permanently resolved. I'll explain to you what the problem is and surprise you at the end with an intense exercise that gives you a good chance of reducing your sciatica issue. Look, here you can see the pelvis, the lower spine, the sacrum, and the sciatic nerve comes out here and then goes down the back of the leg down along the leg, and this is where all the gluteal muscles are located. We spend most of our day sitting down. This is very well known. And then we have the leg here. That means in the front, everything gets shorter and more tense. And then when the leg goes down, the body wants to move forward because everything in the front has become shorter and it tries to straighten up. This affects the entire buttock area here, and that's where the sciatica gets compressed. If we eliminate that as the cause, you've got a good chance of feeling better. If you found this explanation helpful and it motivated you to practice more, then please be kind. Give a thumbs up or leave a comment if you'd like more content like this so you can fully understand what we're doing before we begin the first exercise. And one more thing, please take a moment to feel into your sciatica, whether it's on the right or left side, maybe even on both sides. Notice how the pain feels and whether you're currently sensing it. Ask yourself how present is it before we do the first exercise. For the first exercise, please sit down on a chair and join in right away. You've tuned into the pain, now sit down, and if your right side is affected, place your right leg as far as possible on top of your left knee. It might not work out. In that case, you should just go ahead and place your leg gently over like this, then carefully slide yourself up as far as you can manage. Maybe you can make it over the knee. If not, just stay underneath. If you're able to get over the knee, continue bending your leg steadily and it will gradually raise your foot even higher. And then you already notice that it starts to pull in the area of the right buttock. And that's exactly what we want. And what we're going to do now is actually quite straightforward. You make sure to stand up really, really straight and just keep moving forward. And then the pain in your back is most likely triggered. A bit more, a bit less, depending on how intensely it manifests individually for you. Now, it is very crucial for you to really focus on maintaining the proper arch in your lower back area. Now, let's do a sway back. Normally, we don't want that, but now it's beneficial for the exercise. And now you continue moving forward, and then you start to notice, for me, it's on the right side, for you, perhaps, on the left side. How the stretch increases, and you gradually increase the intensity just enough so that you can still comfortably bear it. Don't be afraid if it hurts a bit now or leads to the pain we're trying to eliminate with this training because we're stretching the structure that we believe is responsible for it, that causes the pain. So everything's fine. Keep moving forward. Feel into it. And then you'll notice if you stay in place and wait for a bit, it slowly subsides. That's the effect that the tissue now gives way, becomes longer. And therefore, the pressure that is back there is also relieved, and that's why it hurts less. And then you move a little bit further forward. Because within this one exercise we're doing, we want to achieve as much as possible. You keep moving forward. Now, try pressing your right foot firmly against your left leg. Push it downward with a bit more steady and consistent pressure than before. Then you'll notice back there, it tightens up even more intensely. Then you relax again, release that tension, and try to move just a little bit further forward. And then you tighten up again. This is the strength training that we are doing here. Apply some tension again because it helps the muscles that should become longer, that should relax, to give in even better. Relax again and then try to move a little bit further forward, stretching as much as you comfortably can. Then slowly come out of the stretch. Place your leg down. And take a moment to feel how it is. For the second exercise, please move to a mat, a soft carpet, or even a firm mattress. That's possible. And now get down onto the crawling position. 
Try to straighten your back and out of the hollow back. And now if you're working on the right side, move your left leg out to the side. Otherwise, the other way around. And the right leg is stretched out and then you slowly lower yourself down. And then you start to notice that it pulls in the right side. A bit lower down the leg, all the way up to the back, maybe even in the hip. All right, let's jump right in and get started. With the first exercise, we're specifically targeting the tension in the back of the buttocks, which affects and compresses the sciatic nerve. We tackled that. In the second exercise, we address the cause. Because as mentioned in the explanation earlier, we assume that the short and tensed muscles from the front trigger a counter reaction in the back. So we're now addressing the root cause. You'll notice that by extending your left leg out, your left knee, we're getting a more direct stretch on the right side. Let them sink down gradually. Keep going. And now try pressing your knee gently against the floor and apply strength to what needs to be stretched. And relax again. Then you realize, aha, it can go just a bit further down. Be sure to avoid arching your lower back too much. Keep making a continuous and graceful effort to gradually move with the, with the right groin slowly down towards the floor. It might also reach into the iliac bone, that's possible. Know that the hip flexor, which we're discussing, attaches to the spine at the back, the lumbar spine, and into the iliac bone. And now we have it fully stretched. This is good because it reduces the excessive pulling force from the front, addressing the root cause more effectively. Breathe deeply again, and now press more firmly with your right knee against the floor, or alternatively, you can use your left knee if you happen to be doing this on your left side instead. Press down really firmly. Then release it and sink even deeper, and you'll immediately notice, oh yes, that's much more clearly pronounced now. And the more you sit without balancing it out, the more likely you'll feel it. And once again, you firmly press against it. You push back against it and then let go, allowing your body to fully relax and gradually move a little bit further. Down. Take a good deep breath. Always remember to use the exhale for gradually increasing the stretch and then slowly, very gently, come back up to the original position. And now transition into the kneeling position. Try to carefully feel if anything back there feels different. If you're currently experiencing acute sciatica, or if you have in the past, you may already feel a difference. Tune in. What does the pain tell you now? How affected is your body still? Okay. And if you're finding it really difficult to complete the exercise, simply click here for an alternative workout option. And maybe share a comment on how it feels for you, what changes you might already notice. We're definitely very interested. Now for the final exercise. We are going to continue staying in the four-point position. And now, please pay very close attention to what I'm going to say. Now, you take from the side where your leg is affected, where your buttock is affected, to be precise, you bring that leg forward and move your foot past the other knee. If that feels too tight, then just move your hands a little bit further forward to give yourself some more space. And then you place the back of your knee gently against your left leg. And now, make sure to move your pelvis as far to the left as possible if you're working on the right side, so that your right knee is practically below your center. And then you lift your left leg so all the body strength, meaning the entire weight of your body, is now resting on your right thigh. And now you might already start to notice that it pulls exactly in that spot. There's a particular muscle there called the piriformis. And that is also an essential part of the entire gluteal muscle group. Right at this moment, you are stretching and pulling on it. And this is especially important because, according to our experience, it helps to clear the sciatica effectively. 
And now just imagine that your right thigh begins pressing more and more into the pelvis area because that way it stretches better. Just picture that. Try to keep your buttocks completely relaxed so that you get the sensation that, oh, the right thigh is gradually sinking more and more into the pelvis area. It doesn't actually move, of course, but the visualization can be very helpful. Breathe deeply, and you'll notice the longer you breathe, the more it pulls there, maybe exactly at the spot that always bothers you. And you can shift your hips a bit to the left or to the right side. You can move a little bit forward or backward and carefully find the exact spot where you feel the most pressure on the specific area you are trying to relieve. And then try feeling inside your buttocks. If it happens to work for you, just give it a shot and see how it goes. Doesn't necessarily have to be. Simply try to tense up as if your pelvis needs to lift upwards towards the ceiling. But you only do it as much as you're not really moving. Then you relax again and you'll notice, oh yes, now it stretches a bit more. And then you do it again. Apply strength and move your hips slightly as if you want to lift yourself up. But don't actually lift yourself up. It's really just about making the attempt to lift without actually lifting and then relax again. And try once more to really completely and very thoroughly relax all the muscles in the buttocks. Completely let go so that the thigh presses deeper and deeper into the joint socket, so to speak. A little more, a little more, and a little further. And then slowly begin to come out of the position again. And come back up. Move around a bit and feel how it is. Maybe stand up and take a few steps. I don't know when you first noticed the pain. It's also important for you to always be aware of the comparison, where you can then ask yourself, Dear Pain, hey, are you still there? Let me know yes or no. Please leave a comment below to respond if you can. Thank you. You might already begin to notice some significant difference, particularly if you sincerely felt something earlier on. And now we are getting to the bonus exercise that I promised you right at the beginning. For the bonus exercise, kindly take the SI joint and sciatica savior or a coconut of the corresponding size. You need to know that there are different sizes. But as an alternative, you can use a ball that's relatively firm but not too large so that it fits well into that area. If you have the ISG Rescuer, you should use the attachment that is the sharpest one as it usually fits the best. And what are you doing now? You start to relax, lie down, and just gently shift with the rescuer into that really comfortable and cozy position. You need to experiment a little bit more so that you can... Ah, yes, now you feel it. So I can feel it too, yes. There's this really sensitive area now, and that's precisely what we are actually looking for. If you notice that you're not quite getting it right while lying on your back because you can't quite locate that specific spot, then just go ahead and take off the upper part and sit directly on it. And now you can approach it differently. You have to try and see what works best for you. So the more you hit that sensitive spot, the better it will be for you. And then you just stay on it. Watch some TV, have a chat, listen to music, whatever you feel like doing, while continue doing the exercise at the same time. And drop a comment whenever you try out this specific exercise, no matter what exactly you're using, and tell us how you feel afterward. On a personal note, this ISG Sciatica Hero is indeed a highly useful and beneficial tool. And we designed these tools specifically to make practicing easier for you so you can practice more efficiently and save valuable time. If you're truly interested in knowing what exactly is going on, then click either right here or just below this video, and you'll receive all the important information you need. And now there's something else that's important to me. Please, share the video, spread the word on what exercises can be done for these sciatica problems or overall buttock pain. We aim to keep spreading this important message widely and help as much people as we can. Join us.
And if you click right here, another video featuring helpful exercises for sciatica pain will pop up. And if you click down below, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Bye.